Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewkesbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their... kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Clearly a left handprint here. Someone bled profusely here. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. Malpal, soaked with salt water. 1,000 pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk.
police boots. Always happy to a heavy boot with a worn out sole. A man's footprint. Excuse me, just one question. A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Hmm, coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. A steel dirk, sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? Heavy boots with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. A violent death. This man, limping. Coal dust, I think we're on to something here, John. If they find out about the past. Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a sewer. What kind of a genius bureaucrat came up with this idea? If they find out about the passage, everything will go there. Carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. No hint of blood or impact. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. Someone was dragged against their will. You know what? I'd like to understand. The refugees have what? been detained. How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? Clarified.
It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. I'll use it to create a solution. That will kill, not save him. It won't do any good. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. I've plated all the ingredients, now to prepare the first aid solution. Thank you. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection.
if they find out about the place. They find out about the passage. It's sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. A single Malpal butt. Roadman Cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. 
However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. If they find out about the passage, Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here, Sheriff. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger. But somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clerk can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Nayla's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Nayla, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Nayla?
My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice. Please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Naylor doesn't want us meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that may... I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. You still here? Your problem, not mine. The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck. Two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right? Don't bother someone else with this, son. The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. Sherry, wait. You might be leaving. 
probably won't be coming back here anytime soon. There are still matters we can settle before leaving the camp. Excuse me, just one question. Sorry. At least some of your kind have a hat. Thank you again. Can I ask you a question? Sorry. We don't see much here. <sighs> can you satisfy my curiosity? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Mr. Holmes. It's a shame we didn't learn more about that scheme the guards were talking about. The corruption in Cordona flourishes once more. We simply don't have time for this, John. We need to proceed with the case. No, sir. Now the rules for coming in have become much more stringent. So, reap the benefits. It's a shame we didn't learn more about that scheme the guards were talking about. Help me, please. They often take us from the camps to work. 
Most don't mind, though. It's the only way we get a glimpse of freedom. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freaked. At least it was certainly his last Sorry. time. My gut tells we me that we'll learn more about yet. this ring when we find out where the thug came from. You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here?
you defiled a girl who was with child, don't even pretend that you regret what took place. Do you wonder why I came here? It is because I am disgusted with people like you, and the only way in my mind to rid the world of your ilk is to see you hanging from the gallows. All right, all right. Is it about money, as you said in the letter? I have it, all right? There's no need for violence. I've never written a single word to you. As you can see, I have a more direct approach. That letter, it wasn't from you. So what do you want? Answers, to start with. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them. They invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my... sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's... rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just... bad circumstance. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Boniface Mercurio. The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio. Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people. I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake, but I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt.
Layla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. That's not all. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees, find them decent homes, give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes, all right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance. of British imperialism. I take your point. He's even been putting up...
It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees. That's our way in, Sherry. Hey, yo. This is private property. You lost something. Mate. Bernadotte isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away, or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... I did try to resolve this peacefully. The snuff's ready. Sherry, look! An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? <laughs> Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old, at least. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch it to pieces. Keep standing in my way and no one will ever see you again. Right, oh. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. You acted so much like me.
I suppose it's Mr. Bernard Dotty with our fine governor. Eighteen seventy-five. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor? Do you think? You definitely don't have one. The Bernadotti Company Limited Trade Network reaches the most distant colonies of the Great Empire. It must be very convenient. For a man like I have a family. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk. Whenever you're... Bad news. Camp only succeeded in stabbing himself. His next and final journey will be to the morgue. All oh, dear horses. Who the hell are you? Sherlock Holmes. And you are Niccolo Bernadotti, a smuggler, kidnapper, and notorious cutthroat, among other things. Few men would dare waltz into my office and address me like that. You are either overconfident or unintelligent. This is private property. Give me one reason why I should not shoot you on the spot. I am sure my friends at the station would call it self-defense. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization and, thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy anyone I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. 
It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his downfall? I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, oh, high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Thanks to me. Refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. And how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy. But I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? 
And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotte. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. The front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it, if you want to. Treasure maps from the Governor. Have you thought it all through? Almost. The refugees, what will happen to them? Well, I wouldn't be standing here in this fancy office if I didn't know how to pull the right strings. In fact, it's the only thing I know. The local governor will receive a decree signed by the House of Lords containing a request to patriate the refugees in the name of the Crown. From where did you gain such influence? I never asked you how you found the photograph. So don't ask the magician how he performs his tricks. But how can I believe you? Ugh, I presume you do believe in my selfishness. The initiator of the refugee salvation will be none other than the British envoy. Saviour and protector of those in need. It's a win situation for me, too. Now, what about the photograph? You deserve to be punished, but the greater good is what matters here. I won't bargain it for justice for Naila. I'm glad that this situation is over. It will be over when you settle the matter of the refugees. You have my word, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh. He's dead. 
How very droll, Mr. Holmes. For I presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more, then. What happened to your crusade of truth? Was it not that important, after all? No truth will satisfy you, Mr. Vogel. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen not to tell me, I respect your intention. But it is just rather boring, isn't it? It is what it is. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I had hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Mm -hmm.